On this flash drive, I have a file that contains a virus, and I expect my antivirus to catch it and protect my system. But will it? Here's my good old Windows 10. I'm going to open up the File Explorer, go to the USB drive, and here you can see two files, a zip file and a link to a website. Let's right click on that file, let's click on copy, and then let's go to the desktop, right click on that, and then paste. And then, voila, the antivirus has kicked in. You can clearly see that it captured that virus and it's working. Brilliant, job well done, and you can even see that it's going to remove the virus file from our flash drive. Okay, what about the shortcut to this website? What's it gonna do now? Well, here is an average looking website at best. Nothing seems weird. Certainly not antivirus messages has popped up anywhere. Um, okay, well, so nothing's happened, right? Not really. You see, whilst being on the website without any indication that something is wrong, I have actually allowed a hacker into my browser, which means that they could launch commands and attack my system. All this without a peep from my antivirus. So what's going on? Well, before I show you this, as always, this isn't a tutorial on how to hack people. This is for educational purposes only so that you're aware that this is happening and you can protect yourself. Okay, let's get going. So the system I'm using here is called Beef, which stands for Browser Exploitation Framework. It's a tool that we use to test our own systems and it focuses on the web browser itself. Well, without getting into the technical details, what this does does is something called a hook. It hooks into your browser so that you can run various commands and is super powerful. I mean, just look at this. So this is what the system actually looks like. Under the commands, you can see a whole bunch of folders and under each folders are a whole bunch of either exploits or probes. I'm able to f attack this browser. I'm able to exploit it. I'm able to pull information from it. And in fact, let me show you a very simple one. Let's do a search for Google. Once I've done that, under the social engineering little category, there's something called Google phishing. Now on the right hand side, I can then configure it. I can set a whole bunch of options. So let's execute this Google phishing and see what that looks like. So here I am, I am the victim. This is the browser. I'm browsing this beef website, happily looking to buy something. Oh, look at this. Google wants me to log in. Well, it must have timed me out. So let me just quickly sign in. Here is my username, so no idea at gmail.com. Let me put in my super secret password, and then I'm just gonna click on sign in. What the victim doesn't realize is that they've just given their username and password to the attacker. Now, as a viewer of this channel, you might not fall for this, but how many people will? Especially if you're distracted or in the middle of doing something and this pops up, you might just want it to go away, so you log in to get back to what you were doing, not realizing what you've just done. But wait, there is more. Okay, as a hacker, I wanna see whether this person is using a password manager like LastPass. I can detect that and I can say, okay, well, if they are using LastPass, well, then I can actually create a prompt to say, hey, give me your LastPass username and password. In this case, they're not using LastPass. What else can I do? I can create a prompt that will pop up on the browser. I can make the prompt say absolutely anything and whatever they type into that browser, once they click OK, you guessed it, go straight back to me as the hacker. And I can see all their answers. Now, something that is super powerful is being able to prompt the user to install something on their system. So how about an additional plugin that's required for this page? And of course, if my victim actually clicks on install the missing plugin, it will try to download something from my website, which of course they will allow because they are the ones who prompted it. Let's do some more social engineering. How about a Facebook prompt? So going back to playing the part of the victim here, I'm now on this beef website and then look at this, my Facebook timed out. So I pipe in my email and password. Same can be done for a LinkedIn prompt, a Windows security prompt, a YouTube prompt, and even an iCloud prompt. And all of this doesn't trigger your antivirus and it works on both desktop and on your phone's web browser too. And still feeling nice and safe when you're clicking on those links? So the message is still the same. Do not click on links that you don't know. And whilst antiviruses are an absolute must, they are not the reasons to let your guard down. A great way to protect yourself is by using two-factor authentication, but even that, don't make this common mistake which I speak about in this video right over here. Also, check out this video over here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Hit the head here to subscribe and I will see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.